Good morning. God bless you. And welcome to Unshackle Ministries in Paramount, California. Amen. God is good. God is blessed. And we want to welcome all of our Facebook friends and family members out there. Amen. And uh, also a good shout out to our new YouTube friends and family and all of those that uh, view our services on YouTube. It'd be nice to get a like there. And also if you get, um, what is it they have to do again? Subscribe. Amen. Praise God. And uh, we just thank you for joining us today. And uh, I know God has something special for you. A mighty miracle in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. You love the Lord today, church? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is always good. And God is forever. Amen. Amen. Praise God. For all of you that are, that are here with us today, I just thank the Lord for your strength and your courage. Amen. Hallelujah. Coming out and standing up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think now with the windows open, we can turn those things on. It'll flood. It'll, it'll make the air flow through. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's water for every, anybody that wants water, there's water out here for you. Um, also, there's the hand sanitizers and all that we have in order to keep everybody safe today. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, the Lord has given me a, a, a word uh, for this morning. And that word is, the wages of sin is death. Oh, the wages of sin is death. But we have to understand, wages means something that comes from what we're doing. Amen? The Bible says, what you sow, you're going to reap. So we need to continue to keep our faith strong in the Lord and in the spirit of His might. Amen? Praise God. If you go with me to your Bibles, I want to share with you a scripture in the book of Romans chapter 6. Praise God. Hallelujah. And in here, starting on verse 1, it's a little bit of reading, but uh, we need to hear the Word of God. And I pray that you will all, you know, just put your attentiveness in reading the Word today and hearing the Word today. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Apostle Paul says in Romans, he said, in verse 1, he says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. He goes on to say it like that because I believe that he was like a little bit frustrated. Shall we go on sinning because we have the grace of God covering us? And he yells out, By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Say that, a new life. That we may live a new life. Praise God. Um, if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Praise God. Hello. Praise God. A hallelujah would be good. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. We're going to turn the air conditioners off again. <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he, death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God. 
in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body as to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness for sin for sin shall not be your master because you are not under the law but under grace amen, amen. what then shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace by no means don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves you are slaves to the one to the one whom you obey whether you are slaves to sin which leads to death or to obedience which leads to righteousness but thanks be to God that though you used to live you used to be slaves to sin you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness when you were slaves to sin you were free from the control of righteousness what benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of those things result in death but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God the benefit you reap leads, leads to holiness and the result is eternal life for the wages of sin is death this chapter ends like this the wages of sin is, is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus let's pray Father, we thank you this morning. Open our eyes up to the scriptures. Let our hearts be open to what your word brings forth today, Lord. That we may walk, Lord God, in a way that's pleasing to you, Lord. That we may live in a way that honors you and glorifies you in all things, in all of our actions, in all of our thoughts, in all of our speech, and what we put our feet to go and what we put our hands to do Lord let us bring you honor and glory in our whole being Lord for you went through so much that I could have this wonderful life this new life this freedom Lord Lord I praise you today and I thank you for your blessing in your church today in Jesus name amen, amen. well church when you say the wages of sin is death Has anybody ever come to think what's lost when we choose to sin over righteousness? What's lost? If the wages of sin is death, what's the scary picture about it? What do we lose? What happens? You know, because obviously we don't get it that's why we still maintain a heck a dr jekyll and mr i was going to say heckle and jekyll <laughs> god forgive me we live a dr jekyll and mr hyde type of life when it's convenient to live in christianity and live for righteousness we do it when it's inconvenient we allow sin to take over again. Coming out of our mouth, coming out of our choices, coming out of our, you know, what we, what we, what we choose to do. We no longer ask God into our homes. We no longer ask God, who should I be friends with? We no longer ask God to bless every meal and every drink that comes into our home or into our body. Because sometimes it's inconvenient or sometimes we're afraid of who's around us, what they're going to say. 
But the life that God has called us to live is a life of righteousness. Because a life of righteousness is a life that pleases God. It's the life that brings honor to Him. It's the life that shows, you know what, Christ, you mean something to me. It's the life that says, God, I reverence you. I fear you more than I do man. Hello? Because sometimes, because our families and friends will get embarrassed, will get shy, Kate. Hello? And we'll start making up things, well, eh, it's not the right, you know, it's not the right time. You know, your life belongs to God. My life belongs to God. Amen? We learned this. We learn this in the, in the scriptures. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The gift of God is eternal life in whom? Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise God. He lived a sinful, sinless life so that you and I could wear that life. Amen. But we have to bring honor to God as we put on the Lord Jesus Christ daily. All sinful, all sinful behavior is a wrong attempt at meeting basic needs. The essence of sin is man living independently of God, who has said that he will meet all of our needs as we live out life in Christ. Am I right or wrong? Hello? God says it in Philippians 4.19. He says, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So we have to trust God. We have to trust God. If, you know, if you trust God for eternal life, going to heaven, forgiveness of sin, a new life, then you should surely be able to trust God for a loaf of bread. Am I right or wrong? And sometimes we start thinking and wandering off in, in, the, in the wilderness, trying to, trying to make our own way, trying to make this and trying to make that. But God is saying, just trust me. I've done it all for you. Did you hear not the words? It is finished. What I've done, you just need to trust in. You just need to live in. You just need to walk in. Hello? Praise God. The effects of the choice of Adam and Eve was loss. They lost relationship with God through sin. The wages of sin is death. They lost the relationship with God through sin. Through the sin of what? Disobedience. Through the sin of wantonness. Amen? What kind of death did they experience? A spiritual death. A great separation. Hello? And sometimes we can say, wow, they were, they were some, they sure messed up, right? But you, whom have that opportunity every day. How much time do we spend with him and building up that relationship? We spend our time on a lot of other things, careless things that may seem important, but our life with Christ should be the supreme important thing of all. God should, you know, we say Jesus is Lord and God is number one, but is he? Because when fear comes in, attacks come, adversities come. What do we do? We melt away. When you get that inhibition to, to go back to an old or former way of life, Maybe you've come out of a drug world and the scene was very powerful in your life. Sometimes you may have the tendency to run back to that way. Why? Because we're not trusting in God to break the power of that sin over your life. Amen. And that's what God has to do. He has to show you. And you have to be willing to accept. Amen. That all the things that God has delivered you from, He will keep delivering you from. Amen? Amen. But you're not going to help God by, or help yourself by running back to it on the first time. Your fears, your anxieties, your worries. 
You know, you don't have to be running back. You have to trust God. Adam and Eve did not make that choice and they suffered loss, spiritual death. What happened to Adam and Eve spiritually because of the fall? They died. Spiritually, their union with God was severed and they were separated from God. Hello? What happens when we disobey God? And we go without 1 John 1, 7. We just go on living. We don't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit telling us, confess your sin. Confess your sin, for he is faithful and just to forgive you. Because when we go on in the norm and just keep doing and doing and doing and doing, understand that the wages of sin is death. The loss can be a mass multitude of loss, of life, possession, things, family, relationship with God. Yeah, we need to hear it. We need to hear this because you know what? Sometimes the things that we think we don't want to hear, you know, is the things we need to hear. Your relationship with God is too important. Well, I'm responsible for my relationship, Pastor, not you. Now, if you're obedient to God, God has given you gifts, pastors and leaders to prepare the church. Pastors and leaders and, and evangelists that have been anointed to bring the word of God to you, to edify the saints of the living God, to train them up for the works of ministry. Hello? Because we are to prepare a church that is with spot, without spot or wrinkle for the coming of the Lord. That's the duty that's assigned to the leaders of the church. They've been anointed, gifted to prepare a church. Amen? <clears throat> Praise God. Hallelujah. So their union with God was severed and they were separated. God had specifically said in Genesis chapter 2 verse 17, he specifically said, But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Hello. God said that plainly and ahead of time. God told you to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ with every aspect of your life. Amen. For young kids, for young teenagers, for young adults, for middle-aged adults, for old, used-to-be adults. Amen? Hello? Your life should be drawing closer to God, not farther away. You shouldn't be getting comfortable in, 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 the, in the comfortableness of, of, a, of religious ways. Hello? You need to have a spark in your relationship with God. It needs to excite you when you hear the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. When you feel the tugging or the presence of the Holy Spirit, it just should make you, the hair on the back of your head and arms stand up because it's exciting to be in the presence of God. Because when the presence of God is here, and I believe the presence of God is here in this very moment. Amen. As the word of God is exalted, as the name of Jesus Christ is proclaimed, the power of God is here to heal, deliver, to encourage, to build up. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. They were told you will surely die. What happened? They were told. I mean, if somebody told you you were going to die, amen, if you, if you looked, you know, if you did this or you did that, I'm sure that you wouldn't do it, right? Well, well, I'm not that sure because I know that God has blessed a lot of you tremendously. And you know the way to be with God. Amen. Hello? Amen. They ate and they died. Did they die physically? Not immediately. Although physical death would be the consequences ahead as well. 
They died spiritually. And folks, you got something that is so valuable, so wonderful, and I'm telling you, if you don't invest in it, you die spiritually. If you're not investing in the, in the Word of God, if you're not investing in divine prayer, if you're not investing in the lives of the helpless, the needy, and the broken, then you know what? You're always into just me, myself, and I. Hello? And I'm sure everybody, but I learned something a long time ago. As, as we water others, we ourselves are watered. When I consider the needs of my friends, when I consider the needs of my wife, my children, my grandchildren, my friends, my family, God considers my needs. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But they died. They died spiritually. They were separated from God's presence. Amen. But what was the loss? Oh, that's not so big of a loss, right? Not a big deal. Well, they lost more than that. They lost their place. The Bible says that God evicted them from the Garden of Eden. The wages of sin is death. Their life and fellowship with God was, 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 was gone. The closeness, the intimacy. Every relationship needs that closeness and intimacy. Husbands and wives, parents and children, you got to have it. Amen. God in man, God in creation, God in his children, you got to have it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So they were physically cast out of the Garden of Eden. What effect did the fall, did the fall of mankind or the fall of man produce in Adam's mind. He, he and Eve lost their true perception of reality. And the idea of knowing was no longer relational. When we read in Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 and 8. It says they tried to hide from God. And sometimes we'll do that too. Sometimes we, we don't just run and hide, you know, we're just kind of like doing what we're doing, but whoa, you can't hide from God. You can't go to another city and get out of your church realm, family city, amen, and say, I'm going to live it up over here because nobody's going to see me. Hello? You can't go into your secret dungeon or closet and say, you know what, nobody's going to see me. God sees you. And God knows. And I would say today, don't play. Be real. Be real with God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They tried to hide from God. And to me, that reveals a faulty understanding of who God is in their minds at the time. How can you hide from an omnipresent God? But their minds were darkened. They, they distorted, their distorted perception of reality reflects what the Apostle Paul describes of the futile thinking of those who don't know God. It says in Ephesians 4.18, it says they are darkened in their understanding, separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Amen. What hardens our hearts, folks, toward the things of God? You're Christians, you're born again, you're children of God, but sometimes do your, heart, do your hearts feel hard toward God? When you stop and you don't trust him, you doubt what he's going to do. If he tells you that you have a, you have a new life, things are going to get better. Amen. He doesn't lie to us because he never said you're never going to have a life without troubles. He says in this world, you will have many troubles, but don't let it shake you. Don't let it tear you down. Don't let your faith dissipate. Amen. But get stronger and know that if you're going through something, it's because God is doing a refining work, maybe. Amen. 
It's because God is trying to get your attention. Because he's tried all the other ways. He's tried the preacher talking to you. He's tried letting you hear it from the word of God. He's tried speaking to you. But you're always so busy that you never, 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 never. Well, maybe a little bit. Have time for God. Time for God is what we should have all the time. He loves you. He cares about you more than you can even begin to understand. Amen? Amen. Hello? Hallelujah. In essence, with Adam and Eve sinned, they lost the true knowledge of God. In God's original design, knowledge was relational. Amen? Was relational. God wanted to have that relationship with Adam and Eve. A good, honest relationship. But what happened? They believed a lie. And sometimes, you know the serpent that was in the Garden of Eden? Sometimes he could be moving around in your mind. And he can tell you, no, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. You don't have to pray. You don't have to go out and visit the sick. You don't have to read your Bible. You know it all already. And anyways, you're, the wages of sin isn't really death. The wages of sin is pleasure. The wages of sin is good times, fun times. The wages of sin is exciting. Hello, isn't that how they get you with all the commercials and everything on TV? Come on. They entice you. Amen. They entice your flesh. You don't even need a new car. <laughs> and you go out and buy a new car. Praise God. Or they tell you the story of how good it feels to get all intoxicated. But they don't tell you what happens after that. How your life can end up and you can be caught in a trap that you can't get out of. Because the devil is a liar and that liar lies every day the Bible says he was a liar since the beginning and he's always gonna be a liar amen and when you find yourself doubting the Word of God you're you're advocating his lies amen God has a better life for you. he said I've given you a new life God is so awesome he scraps all the past what he holds us accountable for is what we do with the new life. Because we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I didn't say the great judgments, the great white judgment seat at the end, but we will stand before Christ and have to give an account. All of us will. Therefore, live a life that's worthy of the calling, that's worthy of the death that was that Christ that gave you, amen? amen? That he invited you to share. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When they sinned, they were banished from the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve lost their relationship with God and the knowledge of God, which was essential to that relationship. In our unregenerate state, we may have known something about God, but we didn't know God because we had no relationship with him. And the Bible tells us that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the man without the spirit, the cardinal man, the unregenerate man, the old natured man, does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Amen? Amen. Another emotional byproduct of sin is shame. Shame and guilt. But there's even a beyond that, because there's sometimes that I see and have seen and have witnessed. Not even Christians have a shame and guilt when they know that they're offending the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit brings a 
thing to give you like, hey, you shouldn't be doing that because God loves us and he warns us. You know, we shouldn't be doing such and such. We shouldn't be going to such and such a place. We shouldn't participate in certain, certain things. Hello? But we continue to go in that direction. Hello? And the Holy Spirit's tugging at our ear, tugging at us. Come on, come on, get out of there. Amen? Then we gotta listen. Listen to what God says, to live, to live the right way. Amen? Hello? Hallelujah. So, a byproduct of sin is shame and guilt. Before Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they were naked and unashamed. Amen? After they sinned, what did they do? They hid from God. When they sinned, however, they were ashamed and they tried to cover up their shame. Hello? How many of you know that we have a tendency to do that too? Sometimes you can be caught red-handed and you still will say, I didn't do it. You know, there's a story in the Bible about um, Abraham's wife, Sarah. And God was prophesying a word of prophecy. Something that was going to happen. That she was going to have a kid at the same time next year. And she was sitting in her tent. And God was talking to her husband. And she was sitting in her tent. And she was laughing. Can an old, can an old lady like me still have kids? Can my old, old man still help make that happen? Hello? And she was laughing. And God told her, Why were you laughing, Sarah? Why were you laughing, Sarah? And you know what she said? I wasn't laughing. <laughs> you know, but God knows everything. And you know, sometimes, you know, we, well, all the time, we, we, we have to be honest with God. If there's an issue in your life, if there's a doubt in your life, you know, you can raise it up and talk to God, but you need to communicate with him. He's built this wonderful relationship for us. Amen? Amen. Hello? Many people mask the inner self for fear that others may find out what is really going on inside of them. When dominated by guilt and shame, Self-disclosure is not likely to happen. Humankind has also become depressed and angry. How many of you know that? Right now, humanity is depressed and angry. Praise God. I was laughing last night. I took a, tr I took a drive. We came to the church and cleaned up. And it was really hot in here last night. And we cleaned up and got everything ready for today. So then we took a drive down here to the city of Bellflower. And we happened to pass this, I don't believe it's a nightclub, I believe it's a restaurant with a bar. And they have everybody sitting outside. Having a good old time. No mask, no social distancing. We drive a little bit farther, a couple of blocks down the way, there's another one. Same thing, no mask, no social distancing. And I say that in response to, you know, how they're trying to set themselves up against the churches. Amen. I respect our government. I respect the law. And I obey. Amen. But again, God has called us to obey Him. Amen. Now, I don't co-sign with the churches that are getting together and, and, uh, and they're not practicing what you see here. 
Amen. They're just what we used to call in the in my uh, sect of life. They're just a la brava, <laughs> you know. I'm just we're just gonna do it. Nobody in my family's wearing a mask. Nobody here, and you see a church filled with, you know, two, three thousand people. Praise God, hallelujah, people of God coming together. They got real strong faith. Praise God, I'm not taking nothing away from them, amen. But I think we should obey our government, amen. Especially when it comes to the health thing because of the fact that it's a serious health issue, amen. But if you're doing everything you're supposed to do, then I think, you know, we could give glory to God and believe that all is going to be well. Amen? Amen? Praise God. But humankind became depressed and angry after the fall. Cain brought his offering to God and for some reason God was displeased with it. In Genesis chapter 4 verse 5 it says, But on Cain and his offering he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to him, then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door and it desires to have you, but you must master it. Amen. Sin is crouching. Sin is always going to be there. But it's up to you. It's up to us. It's up to us. Like, I heard this wonderful message, you know. And it's, if there was a dead body right here, and it's dead, right? Hello? It's dead. We put one over here, too, for you guys. One dead one over here, and one dead one over here. Now, no matter what I do to that dead body, because it's dead, really dead, right? He's dead. She's dead. Make it fair for them. Amen. They're dead. Come on, let's go to the party. Come on, let's go get, do this. Come on. Let's go. Are they going to go? Why are they not going to go? Because they're dead. I know that may look foolish, sound foolish, but that's the same thing that, that Paul is trying to tell us here in the book of Romans chapter 6. If you're dead to sin, why do you still yield to its way? There is going to be a resurrection. And you want to be there on the resurrection, right? Hello? But when you're dead to sin... You don't, you don't go in there and, and let yourself, you know, get up to it. Because sin is always going to be crouching at the door. Sin is always going to be right there trying to get your attention. The sin of fear, the sin of failure, the sin of this, the sin of that. Whatever it is that your sin is that you're enticed with. It's always going to be right there. But it's up to you to say, no. No more. You used to be my master. You used to control me. No. No more. Because why? Because righteousness is your master. The new life is your master. The new way is your master. Am I right or wrong? Hello? Oh, you don't want to hear that, huh? Okay. That's fine. Praise God. Why was Cain angry and depressed? Because... Hello? Why was Cain angry and depressed? What did God tell him he had to do in order to? No, it's, it's real simple. If you go back and read it, when you get a chance, go home and read it. He says, if you do what is right. If you do what is right. Is it up there, Caesar? Yeah. yeah. If you do what is right. You will not, will, will you not be accepted? Hello? So every time sin comes knocking at your door, every time sin comes knocking at your door, 
Praise God. What was that? Hey, you know, you gotta really, you have to really say no. You can't hide from it either. You know how sometimes there's people knock at your door and you go tell somebody, go tell them I'm not here. Hello? That's because you're not willing to confront the sin. You know, you believe in God, but you don't believe in the power of God. Because the power of God will give you the strength. The power of God will give you the courage. The power of God will help you to be an overcomer. Amen? And not an undercomer. The power of God will help you to be a conqueror. And you will conquer that. You will conquer that vice. You will conquer that uh, the spiritual habit of sinning. Hello? The wages of sin is death, brothers and sisters. God couldn't have run it much plainer. And with the example of Adam and Eve in the beginning, we can see that the wages of sin causes a lot of loss. Hello? Praise God. Why was Cain angry? Because he didn't do what was right. In other words, God is saying, you don't feel your way into good behavior. You behave your way into good feelings. Jesus said in John 13, verse 7, he says, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen? You will be blessed if you do them. Amen? What's lost in sin's deception? Well, there's a whole lot of things that get lost in sin. There's that relationship that we talked about with God. Amen? And when sin has, has you in its grip, you lose relationship with your family and your friends. Hello? Because your, your sin has control of you. Your sin has a grip on you. And so pretty soon, that sin, whatever it is, amen, it could be alcohol, it could be drug, it could be an immoral affair, it could, whatever it is. When it takes more control over you, you start to lose your relationships. Because people can see that you love the sin more than you love them. Amen. I didn't understand that when I was doing my thing before I used to just do what I used to do and say, I'm not hurting nobody. But I was actually hurting my wife and my children. Amen. And it was wrong. But then Jesus Christ came. Amen. What else do we lose? We can lose our health. We can lose our mentality. We can lose spiritually like Adam and Eve spiritually died. We can be physically, you know, our sins can lead us into physical uh, problems, you know. You can have physical issues, physical problems because of your sin. Hello. And God can heal you. That's why that one man that he healed in the temple, where he tells them, when they, you know, they bring that man that's a paraplegic, his friends dig a hole on the top and they bring him down. He had a physical problem. He couldn't get to Jesus. But he had four friends that, they had enough faith to dig a hole so he could get in front of Jesus. But he was physically suffering. You know the first thing Jesus said to him? Get up! You're healed! That's not what he said to him though. He said, Son, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And then he healed him. Hallelujah! You see, that's the problem. These things don't excite you here. Amen. These things are exciting to me. Right now when I said that, it was like, whoo, I got like a Holy Ghost up and down my back. Amen? Yeah. It's exciting. Your sins are forgiven. Get up. Take up your mat and walk. A paraplegic. Come on, brothers. That's exciting. I mean, maybe you don't see the paraplegic. I don't know. But, but he's walking, he's healing, and he's yelling and saying, praise God. Amen? Praise God. You can lose 
When sin, what's lost in sin's deception is uh, material things. You can lose your place to live. Did Adam and Eve lose their place to live? Did they lose their home, their, their things? You can lose your finances. How many of you know that sin has cost people tremendous amounts of finances and wasteful living? Hallelujah. You know, when the husband or the wife takes the income of the house to go celebrate on themselves, in drunkenness, and foolishness. What happens when the kid needs a pair of shoes? Amen? Finances are gone. Hallelujah. When sin is control of your life, there's a lot of loss that we don't pay attention to. You lose personally, you lose respect. You lose respect for yourself. You know, I've seen people, and I remember when I was out there on my own things too, I lost respect for myself. I see people that are out there in the, on the high kite, amen? And they've lost respect for themselves. They don't value themselves anymore. And that's where sin takes them to, where they think that they're nothing. They think that they can't come out of it, amen? And the devil keeps pounding them with a the lie that you're never going to be nothing. But us as Christians... You see, we shouldn't be living that way no more. You shouldn't be battling with that sin anymore. If you're dead to it, you're dead to it. I see where it is. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. It takes away your dignity. That's what sin does. Your respect and dignity from others. Nobody respects you no more. Why don't my kids listen to me? Why don't my sons or daughters, why don't they respect me? Because now you want to demand respect when you didn't show them respect when they were growing up. Amen? You have to respect yourself before others will respect you. You have to value your dignity, your worth. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory. Praise God. And another thing that sin's deception, what's lost in sin's deception is your true freedom. Your true freedom. Before I knew the salvation of God, I knew of God, but I didn't know God. I tried to do all the right things I knew to do, but without Jesus Christ in my life. And I was, I was a man on the way, as it says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. And God put it twice in the book of Proverbs. He says in, in Proverbs 16, 25, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. And then in Proverbs 12, 15, he says, the way of a fool seems right to him. Amen. Folks, your walk with God is important. Your relationship to Him is of supreme value. What God can do for you, nothing is impossible. What God wants to do for you needs you to have a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. Hello? The wages of sin. I pay for living a life in sin. My family paid for my life of sin. All that we built and were building came tumbling down before I came to Christ. In the midst of my calamity, Jesus Christ knocked on the door of my life. At first I wouldn't answer, and Jesus kept knocking. I was hurting and broken and stubborn. I was blinded by sin and couldn't see it my way out, and Jesus kept knocking. I was filthy in sin's deception and lies, and Jesus kept knocking. God's love penetrated my heart of stone, and His grace gave me a heart of flesh. God can make things right if we will just do what's right. Hello? You have something that's so valuable to you. 
That's a personal relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's something that, you know what, Lord, I want to have coffee with you. I want to have breakfast with you. I want to have lunch with you. Amen. I want to go for walks with you, Lord. I want to talk to you, Lord. I want to hear you sing, Lord. You know, I just want to spend my time with the Lord because I love this person. Amen. Because he's real. Amen. He's beautiful. He's awesome. Amen. Amen. I'm going to end with this in James chapter 1 verse 12. Praise God. It says in there, blessed is the man. Say blessed. blessed. The, man the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When sin and temptation, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted, and this is the most important part of the scripture, each person, you, me, we're tempted when, when by our own evil desire, we are dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to what? Amen. Amen. And sin, the wages of sin is what? So, do you see how it starts? It starts within us. And we give birth to it when we allow ourselves to fall under its trap. You want a miracle from God. Believe God for a miracle. Amen. You want to see God change an individual. Watch God do it. Amen. Will it happen right away in the next four minutes? Maybe not. But will it happen? I believe God. I believe we can pray people into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. I believe we can pray people to be delivered Amen. from whatever's holding them back. But see, church, the whole thing is we cannot allow ourselves to be entangled again and again with the sin that so easily entangles us. You have a, you have a wonderful heritage in Christ put value to it during this time of crisis and that's going on in the world around you don't ever think of yourself as being alone God is with you God is with you don't ever think that you're going to run out or that it's going to be your last meal I just heard my son preach on a message that I preached on my first ever sermon that I did from 1 Kings chapter 17, the widow, when she sent the prophet Elijah over there and, and she was giving up on everything. But she told the, he told the, Elijah told the woman, take whatever you have and make this for me and give me a glass of water. And she did and she trusted the man of God. The Bible says that even though they were in famine, the famine did not affect them. Everything lasted until the famine was over. Amen. Church, that's the God that we serve. That's the God of love. That's the God that you really want to build a relationship with. That's the God that you may want to turn the TV off for. That's the God you may want to turn some of your friends off for. That's the God you may want to turn some of your devices off for. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, James says. Don't be deceived, dear brothers. He says it in an intimate way because he cares about us. 
And then he goes on to say in verse 17, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Amen. God is real. His relationship doesn't depend on emotion. He loves you. He loved us while we were yet sinners. Amen. He loved us when we were the biggest failures of ever. He still loved us. He loved us when nobody else wanted to be around us. Amen. Amen? Because he cares. Amen? Amen? And his love is real. And the same love that we've received, we too must give that love. Amen? We're going to bow our heads for a moment. And, and if sin, even the sin of fear and worry, Whatever the sin is that's been entangling you. Right now, if you believe with me, God can break those chains. Let us pray. Father, I come before you this morning, Father God, and I lift up my brothers and sisters to you today. Father, your word says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Father, let us grasp. Father God, the latter and not the former, Lord. Help us hold on to you, Lord. Help us, Father God. Break the chains from that sin or those habitual sins that continue to plague us and pull us down. Deliver us, Almighty God. Set us free, Lord. As you said, Lord God, that we're dead to sin. Help us to open our eyes to that truly, Lord. Help us to just marvel in this new wonderful life that you've given to us. Everything around us may look the same, but inside something's changing right now. Because Lord, we're giving you that place. And Lord, from now on, Lord, we're gonna continue to knock on your door and knock and knock and knock as we lift up the needs of others. As we pray for our country, as we pray for all of those around us that are ill in some fashion or another. Lord, we love you today and we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the new life in Christ that you've given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Before we close, amen, give the Lord glory. Before we close, I'd like to give our viewers and listeners on Facebook and YouTube an opportunity um, to know Christ as you and I know him. Amen. As a Savior and a Lord. Amen. So you can just reach forth your hands and you can pray with me. As we give somebody out there that's watching today an opportunity to receive a free gift. A free gift from God Almighty. Say, Father in heaven, God in heaven, it is written in your holy word, the Bible, that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me, Lord God Almighty, of all my sins, iniquities, and transgressions. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Now all things have become new in Jesus' precious name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to take a moment now and take care of the tithes and the offerings of the church. If you see there's an envelope on your chair right there around you somewhere. And uh, we're going to pray for it, and then you'll be able to walk over here, you know, one at a time, and leave your offering and your gift. Amen? Praise God. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bring our tithes and offerings, Lord, and lay them, Father God, at the, you know, at the feet of the church, Lord God. We come, Lord God, believing, Lord God, that as we're faithful with our tithes and offerings, Lord, that you promise, Lord, 
You promise on your word, Lord, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour forth the blessings and blessings so great and awesome that we cannot even contain them all, Lord. We trust you for these gifts, and we thank you for the integrity in which we receive them as well, Lord. We bless you and give you all the glory and the honor as we reach out to give in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, for all of you on Facebook and YouTube, we'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.